بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم سبجیکٹ ٹوڈے از فزکس ایف ایس سی پٹ فرسٹ ان دی ٹیچر نیم یو نو فہیم اللہ بابر ڈپارٹمنٹ آف فزکس رش کالج ان دی لیٹسٹ سلیبس وی آر سپوز ٹو فالو اسپیشلی فار دس پینڈیمک سیشن دیر از ان فرنٹ آف یو یو کین سی اٹ اٹ از اے فزکس فرسٹ ایئر سلیبس اٹ از دا میجرمنٹ چیپٹر یو کین سی یو اٹ دا سپلیمنٹری یونیورس ایرر انسرٹینٹی پرسیشن اینڈ ایکوریسی ڈائمینشن آف فزیکل کوانٹیٹیز اینڈ دا چیپٹر ٹو ویکٹر نیو کلیبریم ریزالوشن آف ویکٹر ایڈیشن آف ویکٹر بائی ریکٹینگولر کمپنرز پروڈکٹ آف ویکٹر ٹاک چیپٹر تھری موشن اینڈ فور لینئر مومنٹم فرسٹ پارٹ آف اٹ نیوٹن سیکنڈ لا اینڈ لینئر مومنٹم امپلس ان چینج آف مومنٹم کولیجن الاسٹو کولیجن in the elastic collision, perfectly elastic collision in one dimension. And we are now, these days, in chapter number four, which is work, energy, and power, work, and we have done this one, work done by a constant force, work done by a variable force, work done in the gravitational field, absolute potential energy, this is the article we will study today, the escape velocity and the work energy. So you can see 4.2 and 4.6, so almost there are three articles being skipped over here. So similarly, in the remaining article, in the remaining chapter also some have been skipped. So when we will be doing these chapters, so I will revise this syllabus again and again. In chapter number five, your unit number five will come. So again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it is there are consistency in, the, in chapter number five. So in this way, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So a long way when we will go ahead i will revise and will repeat all these which chapters are to follow which articles are to be taken and this is uh, uh, chapter number four which is in progress and we are doing it these days and the article we are considering that is the absolute potential energy you can see over here the absolute potential energy. The absolute potential energy is defined as the amount of work done in displacing a body from the surface of earth up to infinity. So this condition is quite important and we will also apply it over there later on in our article. So the absolute potential energy will be equal to and this equation would be required to derive minus g uh, gravitational constant m mass of the body, m e mass of the earth, and divided by radius of the earth. So this equation is required to derive. So for this purpose, what we do, so the figure is very important. And in this figure, what we do, we consider that this is the earth. And the earth radius is r e. What we do, according to definition, a body is displaced from the surface of the earth up to infinity. But what we do initially, let a body is displaced from point 1 to point n in the space. So that the distance of point 1 from the center of earth is r1. And the distance of point 2 from the center of earth is r2. And r3, r4, r5, r6. And the last one is the nth one. For example, this is the hundredth one, so this will be the 99, n minus 1, 1 lesser than, and this will be 98, 2 lesser than that. So the distance of the last point from the center of Earth is Rn, and the distance of the 99 point, for example, is Rn minus 1, and similarly, this is Rn minus 2. So what we do, we do consider that these steps the force is variable and it is a gravitational force and we know that, that the gravitational force is inversely proportional to the square of the distance of that body from the center of earth. So it means when we are increasing the distance, uh, we are decreasing the distance, the gravitational force will be affected and this is also called the inverse square law. So to keep this one, 
uh, and the force will not remain constant. So in order to keep the force constant, if you keep these intervals very small, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 4 and so on, so we can try to keep this force, this gravitational force nearly constant, then we can apply the formula W is equal to F dot D. So W is equal to F dot D, if we remember, that was the work done by a constant force. So if the force is not constant, then we can't apply that formula directly. So therefore, we are doing this division into very, very small steps so that the force remains constant. And this can also be made with the, in the book, the figure is given. So that is the same. It is the same radius of earth in point one, two, three, four, n, n minus 1, n point 1, point 2, r1, r2, n, n minus 1, and so on. So mass of earth, and it is the body we are going to displace. So it is the same thing. So now, we did all these. We suppose, let there be a body of mass m dis be displaced from the surface of earth, of radius r e, and m e be the mass of earth, and a certain amount of work is done, is stored in it in the form of potential energy as we are displacing it. When H increases, then G decreases in square as I told you, for a huge distance from the earth center. And as a result, F gravitational also varies and does not remain constant, but the formula of work is a constant force based we have done it. Therefore, the huge distance is divided in smaller interval of steps, yeah, elements, to keep the gravitational constant, yeah, nearly constant. So, Rn is the distance of the nth point we have considered, n minus 1, 199 point I have considered. And similarly, the for a point 1 from the center of Earth, that was R1, and this was R2 in the earlier figure we have considered. The distance between the two is delta R, delta R is equal to R2 minus R1. If we do say that this is a point one, this is a point two, how much distance is covered between these two points? What we this is more, this is lesser, and the distance between them is delta r. So r2 minus r1. For example, this is a tenth, and this is a ninth. So 10 minus 9 is delta r. This is the distance covered between point one and two r, the difference of distance of point one and point two from the center of r. So further we will take the average one, R, which will be over here. We will say, okay, we don't agree R1, we don't agree with R2, but we are taking an average value of this so that we will be taking it more and more accurate. So if we further, so that is now, really, delta R is equal to R2 minus R1, as we will need it, so this minus R1 will be shifted to this side, so this will become plus R1, so delta R plus R1 is equal to R2, which is the distance of point 0.2 from the center of Earth. And the average, I have told you now, that this is equal to R1 plus R2 divided by 2, this is neither R1, this is neither R2, but it is the mid distance between the two, which is called the average. R average is equal to R1 plus R2 divided by 2. So as for the formula, we would need R squared because the gravitational force formula will be applied for the work done. So for that purpose, later on we will substitute. So for R squared, so taking the square of both sides, R squared is equal to R1 plus R2 divided by 2 whole square. So this formula, this is A plus B whole square A square plus B square plus 2AB. So R1 square plus you will see over here, this, is, this will give you R1 square, this will give you delta R square, this will give you 2AB, 2R1, R2, and this 2, this will become 4. You see, over there. A square plus B square plus 2AB divided by 4. So, if we see over here, the delta R, it is a very small quantity. For example, a quantity is 1 over 10, and we will take 1 over 10 square, so that will become 1 over 10 square is further smaller, and 1 over 10 cube, it means it is so smaller, the its higher orders can be neglected. So therefore, we put all these values, R1 square plus R1, so putting all these values, so this delta R, this will be cancelled. This 4, can be given to this one, so this 4 will be cancelled with this 4. 
So similarly, two twos are for two AB. This is again four. So this four and this four will be cancelled. So we will be having only R1 square plus R1 delta R. So again, delta R is coming and we know delta R is equal to R2 minus R1. So therefore, we will put R1 square plus R1 instead of delta R, R2 minus R1. So bring this R1 inside, it will become R1, R2, and this will become plus and minus is minus, and this will become R1 square. This R1 square and this R1 square will be cancelled straight away. So it means that the thing which was started from R square from the beginning, that is the product of the two distances, R1 and R2. Now the work done from point 1 to point 2 by the gravitational force, F G M M E divided by R square would be work done from 1 to 2 F gravitational dot delta R because delta R is the distance covered from point 1 to point 2 and F is the gravitational force and this is from the gravitational law that it is the product of the two masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them and delta R is R2 minus R1 from equation number 3. So when do incorporate these now this is R square in this is the work done from 1 to 2, simplified from of that how much mathematics we did so far. 1 to 2, G, M, E, M, A, and this R square is replaced by R1, R2 as we told, and this is delta R is R2 minus R1. So there are two R, more than two techniques, so the easiest can be followed. So we can take R1, R2 as a common factor from this one and to bring it uh, outside. Or we can also do it over there that, see, R2 minus R1 divided by R1, R2. So, uh, if you uh, bring it inside, right, and uh, we give R2 divided by R1, R2, or R1 minus R1 divided by R1, R2. So straight away we can see there will be cancellation now. If this R1, R2 is given to this one, so there, up, you can uh, see over there, then how much this would be possible. So anyhow, R2 divided by R1 dot, R2 minus R1 divided by R1, R2, if you see this will straight away, there will be cancellation, you see that uh, 1 over R1 minus 1 over R2. So F work done from 1 to 2 is equal to GME 1 over R1 minus 1 over R2. You need a little mathematics there. So it means the thing is quite clear that the work done from point 1 to 2 is equal to 1 over R1 minus 1 over R2. If we are displacing from 2 to 3, 2 to 3, so GME, so 1 over R2 minus 1 over R3. So 3 to 4, GME 1 over R3 minus 1 over R4. The last one is from N minus 1 to N. So we will, uh, from N minus 1 work done, GMME 1 over RN minus 1 minus 1 over RN. So you see what? RN minus 1 minus 1 over RN. So now the work total with the work done from 1 to 2 plus the work done from 2 to 3 plus the work done from 3 to 4 and last one the work done from n minus 1 the 99 to 101. So if you put all these values for those we have derived so you will see that only the first one and the last one will be left and the remaining will be cancelled. For example this minus 1 over r2 this will cancel with this. This will be cancelled with the next one. This, and so all these will be cancelled. Only the first one and the last one will be left. And we can write over here GMME 1 over R1 minus 1 over Rn. This is the formula. So now applying the condition, now apply the basic definition of the absolute potential energy that it is that amount of energy in which work is done in displacing the body from the surface of earth up to infinity. So R1 was at, uh, in the space. So bring it down. So R1 is equal to Re and Rn is equal to infinity from the surface of earth up to infinity when a body will lie on the surface of earth. So definitely it, uh, it will be having the radius because it is touching that one and the R1 is equal to Re. So GME, so putting R1 is equal to RE and RN is equal to infinity. Remember, something divided by infinity will become zero and something divided by zero will become infinity. So minus one over, so straight away this will become zero because this is divided by infinity. This is zero and one over RE this. 
But the work done against gravity system is the negative work. If we are displacing it against uh, Earth, so this is a negative. So therefore, absolute potential energy is equal to minus G M M E divided by R E, which is the most demanded equation as earlier at the top of the article here. So the absolute potential energy, and if we say that the absolute potential energy per unit mass, so therefore if that is shifted there, so it will be also called the potential energy at any point along the journey minus G M M E R E. So the uh, you can uh, per unit mass. So per unit mass, then we can solve as the uh, absolute potential energy per unit mass. So absolute potential energy can uh, also be found per unit mass because this mass is shifted there, so there will be no problem. If you we are asked this equation, if you are asked this equation, so we can do in both the ways. Thank you. Next time, inshallah, we will be taking escape velocity.